is a hallucination of light, and they're caused by a defect in an optical system. What our show is a multi-room installation, and uh, one of the things we do in our work is the beginning of the show, it's a sequence of interiors. We try to create a room that would be the kind of room that would normally be in the environment that uh, the show takes place. So we're in Chelsea. We decided to make it a contemporary art gallery with contemporary art. This quite quickly segues into a second room, which is where there would be art storage and people would be wrapping pieces of art. Fundamentally, what we're trying to create is a sculptural spatial experience where you're having, uh, you're being confronted with material and light and you're, it's really about moving through a physical environment and not necessarily having a narrative story experience. The next room is uh, one of the two bathrooms and this is the um, kind of like a commercial gallery bathroom. But there begins to be sculptures that allude to things that we'll see later that have this cactus crystal motif, but in this case, there is also a piece of uh, ginger coming out of the soap dispenser. The cactus crystal motif that we've been, has been in every project that we've done thus far, and we've always thought of that as some sort of opaque uh, signifier that sort of points towards something, but it's not clear as to what it is, and it appears in various rooms and in various forms. And then you break through this wall into a domestic bathroom, and Behind the shower curtain, then, is the next moment that leads you into a long hallway. The transition from one room to another is very considered, so when they are very different, it kind of acts like a jump cut. So you're moving from one specific thing, and then there's just a brief snap, or you're somewhere else. Um, so this is our OTB. It's got this video that we shot that involves a lot of uh, fast food caricatures. <clears throat> Yeah, right. iconography, the various mascots. But then there's all the, you know, we have all these tickets down here too, which would be the remnants of the people that had actually been betting on this. And there's names, but although they're, they're different names. I mean, there's something about this project that is about, about uh, you know, portraying a city. And in the last prog you know, project we did in LA, we were dealing with a house. And, in particular a certain person. So we wanted to zoom out a little bit and you definitely have these vestiges of the past and there's places that have been abandoned. So time is a little bit out of joint in a situation like this. So once you get through this Kowloon hallway um, and you've gone upstairs, you end up in this plastic surgery clinic and the idea is that this plastic surgery has reached a kind of point that it's uh, very casual and you can get plastic surgery at the same place you might get you know some uh, like a birthday cake or something like that. Now when you get to the sort of interior of this piece where you have the second floor where that kind of bleeds into the first floor well that's an actual multi-use retail environment. Uh, this is sort of this idea that it's the same store um, or the same location that has the plastic surgery shop and there are all these pharmaceuticals and lotions and like elixirs and pills and things of that sort that we've come up with our own brands and our own logos. And um, there's some more of these towels, uh, I guess tunics that are available. And we've got this cake shop over here. And that bleeds into something that's closer to like a, I don't know, a video store and a nail salon. But immediately, once again, you're brought back to that jump cut moment where you move into the library. The idea is to create a maison scene of details that can sort of add up to a fragmented narrative. Um, one of the things that the sort of a structure behind creating this installation is the notion of the period room, which like if you go to the Met or any museum where they're recreating a room of the past and they'll create all the details of that environment. And so we sort of took that as a model for each room having its own specific time period and identity and was unlike any room previous or after. The research that goes into that is anything from books about the, the history of drugs in Cold War America to understanding the new urbanism to reading science fiction novels that are, you know, fictionalizing our concepts of technology in the future. With Straylight Gray that this would become a, a kind of uh, 
amalgamation of the various narrative threads that we've been working on over the past, you know, six, seven years or something like that. Um, I think that people can sort of go in as much as they like or remain, you know, can remain opaque to them. It's sort of like if they're interested in this world that we've created, they, there's stuff is if you look deeper. Mm -hmm.